Hello again, all you calculus people. Um, it's time to start making the derivative function a little easier to work with. Um, so far, we've been finding the derivative of functions using two limit definitions. Um, one f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h approaches zero. Um, and the other is the limit as x approaches c of f of x minus f of c over x minus c. So we've been using those definitions to show whether things are differentiable, um, to calculate derivatives and things like that. But now what we're going to do is we're going to start um, taking a look at some rules that make calculating derivatives a little bit easier. There are some patterns and things that we're going to follow. So the first rule we're going to take a look at is called the power rule. And I am going to tell you whenever possible, change it to the power rule. Um, so there's going to be some math manipulation and some things that we have to do. Um, but it is the easiest of the derivative rules to use. So the first thing I'd like to do is I would like to share my window with you. And here we go. So what we're going to take a look at first is something called the power rule. And we're also going to talk a little bit about using your calculator. So the power rule is fairly simple to work with in terms of a rule, OK? So first of all, I'm just going to define the rule for you. So this is, by definition, what it is. So this is, by definition, what it is. So if I give you any, if we're going to find the derivative, of any function that is x to the n power, OK? So remember, this is the power, OK? So if it is to a power of some sort, you can use this rule, OK? And this is how the rule works. If you're going to take a derivative of that, you'd simply take the n out front Okay, so we end up with n times x to the n minus 1. Okay, so what you do with that power is you move the power to the front. So it's going to be multiplied times x. And then you just need to subtract 1 degree from the exponent. So what you do is you subtract 1 degree to get the derivative of it. So let's take a look at a couple examples. So let's start with a real simple one, OK? So the simplest type of power that you can get is you can get x to some power, OK? So let's just take x to the fifth. Now, if I give you x to the fifth, what we're going to do is we're going to take the power and we're going to move it to the front. So it's going to be 5x. And then what we have to do is we have to subtract 1 from the exponent. So the derivative is, no, this is, we are taking the derivative. I forgot to write that out there. We are taking the derivative of this function. So it's going to be 5x to the fourth. So y prime is 5x to the fourth. Um, if I gave you f of x, it would be f of x prime equals 5x to the fourth. Or if I gave you dy dx, it's equal to x, 5x to the fourth. So remember, we can have multiple ways of showing what the derivative is. But the derivative is 5x to the fourth. OK? Well. What if we get to something a little more complicated, OK? What if I gave you something like this? So here's our function. Let's take f of x. And our function is going to be the third root of x squared, OK? Now, you might be thinking, hmm, that's not a power. OK, but in order to do this, you need to remember some exponent rules. So let's talk about some exponent rules. So let's talk about this first one. This exponent rule takes something that is a square root and then changes it to a power. 
So if you have something, for example, that goes like this, we have the B root x to the A. The rule basically says this. You can rewrite this as x to the A over B, okay? So notice the root is always divided and the power inside of here is always the thing on top of the fraction. So we can take any sort of square root or rational, um, not rational, but radical number and convert it to a power. So what we'll do then is we will convert this one to x to the two thirds. Now it is set up to use the power rule. So just like we did with the previous one, we bring the two thirds out to the front. So it's gonna be multiplied by a fraction. And then we have x to the two thirds minus one. Okay, now there's going to be a few interesting things that start to happen with this. So first of all, and as we're going to introduce another exponent rule. So the first thing is this. It's going to be two-thirds x to the two-thirds minus one is negative one-third. Okay, now you need to remember a couple things. Okay, you do need to remember that you can't have a negative in your um exponent so do you if you remember we do have the negative rule for exponents this is our next our exponent rule that we need to know so let's say i gave you x to the negative exponent let's just say negative n it doesn't matter what it is what is the derivative of that well if you're going to have a negative n remember you have to push it below the fraction line so it's gonna be one over x to the n, okay? So this negative, what this negative does is it forces you to move it down to the bottom of the fraction and then make it positive, okay? It's easier just to remember the rules and stuff like that. So the negative moves it down. So we have a negative one third. So what's that going to do for our fraction? Well, we have two thirds, we're going to move this to the bottom of the fraction. So this is going to move to the bottom of the fraction. So it's gonna be x to the one third power, okay? Now, you could leave it like that, or the college board might have you do this. They might have you change it back to a root. So it would be the third root, because remember, this is the root, and this is the power, x to the first power. So this is where they might have you have go to your final answer. So it would be two over three times the cube root of x to the first power, okay? Now remember, we could have multiple notations for this. This would actually end up being f prime of x because we did start with f of x in the beginning. But you notice the power rule stayed the same but we always end up using a few extra things when it comes to doing the power rule. These few extra things end up being these exponent rules that we need to remember, okay? So you do need to remember what those exponent rules are. Now, let's go and let's take a look at something else, okay? So let's take a look at another example that should be a power rule, Okay, and we need to take a look at it. It is the power rule, but it looks a little bit different. Okay, so let's look at example number three. What if I gave you y equals one over x to the fourth? Okay, now the problem with this is the power rule only works for things that are not in the denominator of a fraction. Okay, so this is not acceptable to do the power rule just down here in the bottom of the fraction. You do need to move this back up so it is now in the form of x to some power. Okay, so we need to do a little bit of changing with this. So we need to use the negative exponent rule, but we need to use it in reverse. 
So if you remember, the negative exponent rule says if you have, so this is the exponent rule, if you have 1 over x to some power and you want to move it up, you do need to change the sign for it. So it's going to be, so let's say it's to the nth power, we're going to have to change it to x to the negative n and move it up to the top. Okay, we're always going to be moving things that have like positive exponents in the bottom. In order to use derivative rules, they have to be on the numerator of the fraction. So what we end up with here is x to the negative 4. Okay, this is now an acceptable format to use the power rule. So just like we did, bring the negative 4 out to the front. So you move this to the front of the x make it x, and now you have to do negative 4 minus 1. So what we get is negative 4 x to the negative fifth. But remember, if it's a negative exponent, you need to move it to the bottom of the fraction if it's in the numerator. So our final answer is going to be negative 4. Move this down to the bottom of the fraction. It's going to be x to the fifth. This is our final answer. So we would say y prime equals negative 4 over x to the fifth, okay? These are just three of the examples that you're going to use using the power rule, okay? Now, I am going to show you one more example, okay? And that one example is just to teach you a little bit about how to use your graphing calculator, okay? So this is the power rule in a nutshell.